can you fix this race without the permission of Billy Kimber? Obviously didn't teach you well enough. Rule one, you don't punch above your weight. Billy Kimber is there for the taking. Says who? Says Tommy and his parliament have won. You strike when your enemy is weak. And I thought you came here to talk family business. Ada wants you to give Freddy this letter. She wants Freddy to know she's having his baby. Tell Ada. Freddy went to America. Oh, Russia. Paul, here did you no good for Ada to bring a baby into the world alone. Paul, listen. The truth is, you would have hit me with that thing if it weren't for the fact that you know I'm right. Paul, you ready to come back? In the end, I did it myself. I did it to myself. And I almost died. And he didn't come back. This woman's in Cardiff. We'll take the train tomorrow. Fancy tea room. Inspector, I responded to your invitation because I want us to understand each other. I'm a businessman. My men found this in the bedroom of a known communist. It has your sister's name on it. Are you also in bed with the communists, Mr. Shelby? I do not share their fantasy. And as for my sister, I've already dealt with the situation. You and your specials will leave my businesses alone from now on. No more raids into our territory, no more smashing up pubs, no more lifting my runners. You will turn a blind eye to all of my gambling operations. Also, I am planning an expansion onto the racetracks. Forgive me, I don't seem to have a pen to write down this rather long list of demands. sell them to the IRA. It won't be long before Mr. Churchill finds out. I imagine you got into enough trouble over the burning of the King's photographs. When I have achieved what I've set out to achieve, I will let you know where to find the guns. You'll be a hero. You'll probably get a medal. Do we have a deal? It's an interesting shot here. I'm not showing his mouth. I need an answer. But I'd prefer if we don't shake hands on it. No, I would I shake the hand of a man who didn't even fight for his country. Well, looks like you took an L there, Inspector, but I'm sure it'll regroup in some way. Thomas Shelby is now the beginning, the middle and the end of your mission. Back on the pipe. He's going to want her to get on his pipe. Shelby's. It hurts me as much as it, as it would a father sending his own daughter into a whorehouse. But no matter how pugnant it may be, you must do everything you can to get close to him. Mm -hmm. Find out where those guns are heading. You are now active on a military operation on behalf of the Crown. Is the horseman sabotaged? Hobbled. You bought with the fair and bad feeling. Huh? The least put a bad seed in the hoof and got an old woman to put a spell. <laughs> Spread to the other feet. It's going to his heart by tomorrow, I say. I've seen curses like this twice. Can't take them back, Tom. Rosary. You took the night off. <clears throat> you went to the pictures. If it's convenient for your mission, Lassie. It's not a good idea to look at Tommy Shelby the wrong way. The king will be there. King George? Nope. King Billy Kimber and all his men. And I asked her to let me sing. It's part of the deal now, too. I asked around about that pub he said you used to work in. 
My friends over there. No one has heard of you. My guess is you're the girl from the good family who got us all pregnant. So I'm right. And Polly is wrong. Right about what? Doesn't matter. Get up on the chair. Happy or sad? Sad. Not surprising. Okay. And, and her hair clung to her shoulder. The empty would be poor. Jesus. Freddy. You came back? It's Tommy who tipped me off. Maybe he's got half a heart after all. Tommy got a message to me. He said, get out of town. Take her with you. Will you marry me? Yeah. We're gonna stay here, we're gonna marry here. I'm not afraid of Tommy Shelby. No, you gotta be afraid of the cops, bruh. Did you want whiskey as well? No, just beer. Why well, not whiskey time? You're expecting trouble. And what did make you change your mind, though, Tommy? Hmm? Yeah, it means it's about time to leave. Time for what? Oh, Tommy took yourself a woman. This plague of bloody hands. Is it the, the Lee family or whatever? Holy shit. It's Billy Kimber. Oh, OK. The king. Is there any man here named Shelby? <laughs> I said, is there any man here named Shelby? How to get these men a drink? Everyone else go home. <laughs> well, who's the boss? Well, I'm the eldest. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> Are you laughing at my brother? Right, he's the oldest, you're the thickest. I'm told the boss is called Tommy, and I'm guessing that's you, because you're looking me up and down like I'm a fucking tart. He won by a length twice and then finished last. With 3,000 pounds bet on him. Which one am I talking to? Which one of you is the boss? I'm Mr. Kimber's advisor and accountant. I am Billy Kimber! I run the races, and you fixed one of them, so I'm going to have you shot against the post. Look at it. That is my name, and it's, it's from the Lee family. You were also at war with the Lees, Mr. Kimber, am I right? Perhaps we should listen to what Mr. Shelby has to say before we make our decisions. Right, the Lees are doing a lot of talking at the fairs. They have a lot of kin. They are saying the racetracks are easy meets because the police are busy with strikes. Now, we have connections. We know how they operate. You have muscle. Together we could beat them, divide it, maybe not. I admire you, Mr. Kimber. You started with nothing and built a legitimate business. It would be an honor to work with you, Mr. Kimber. Nobody works with me. People work for me. Pick it up, Pikey. For your ceiling. Thank you, Mr. Kimber. We will be at Cheltenham. As will I. That went reasonably well, I would think. <sighs> so you picked a fight with the leagues on purpose. Okay, so the plan all came together in the end there, Tommy's plan was the fight that started at the beginning with the Lees, I think they're called, uh, the Gypsy clan, um, was because I guess they were giving 
Billy Kimber there, I think is how you say his name, trouble. So then the plan is to get in business with him that way. And he was calling him the king. So I guess in terms of horse track action, betting, he's the top man in Birmingham there. Um, and I'm not sure what happened with the horse there. Um, something's wrong with its foot or had some disease, but they're saying that the I mean, I guess it's like a common thing to say like these gypsies have curses or whatever. Obviously, it's not true, but uh, at the time, um, even for probably a long time after this, people still thought that part of it might be like some prejudice thing or whatever. But um, I don't, I don't know if they actually did something to the horse, like physically did something to it, or it's just a coincidence. But um, he mentioned even horses in the war. So again, a lot of World War One stuff here. Of course, like I said, there's going to continue to be a lot of that. Uh, well, I, I assume that's why Tommy hasn't been with any women, like, probably being affected by that. But it's also how someone, like, undercover barmaid there is going to get in. Um, and it was interesting that he, like, did look up on her, check up on her, because initially he noted that um, she seemed too well-spoken uh, or whatever it is, like, that... She came from a good family then to be in, in a normal job like this. Um, so he did look her up, but then he made the wrong assumption, obviously. It wasn't a bad assumption, but I think he was using a lot of his own personal current life experience with his sister getting pregnant there uh, out of wedlock and kind of put that on her. And it was very convenient for her, obviously, to accept that. But when really, of course, we know she's working for the, ins the Irish inspector there who, like I said, seemed like he was, he, he took the hard L. Uh, I was, I was surprised that Tommy came out and said he had the guns to him like that, but I mean, he, he is in a position, the inspector, where he kind of has to go along with it for now, at least until he can maybe get his agent there doing something or other, or find the guns the other way. I mean, he knows who has them now, but he's in a position where, um, he will, like Tommy said, he will get fired or whatever by Churchill or whoever else. Um, and that whole fire King George trick was clever as well. So Tommy's a smart boy. Um, I like how, I like the, how Kimber at the end said that. You're the oldest, you're the thickest. So you must be the, the boss here staring at me like a tart or whatever. Um, that was a good line. But um, what the inspector, yeah, I mean, I, I assume obviously he wants um, her to find out where the guns are or, or just something or some other leverage he can use on Tommy, it would seem. I do. I mean, it is a recurring thing here where the people keep hating on the inspector for not being in the war. But I, I don't know if I'm missing something, but or I'm just missing context from the time or whatever. But I mean, the war would ju just ended last year. It was about five years long. Um, I don't know how old Sam Neill's character is supposed to be, but in real life, he's in his 60s, I'm pretty sure. Um, and he, obviously at this time he would have been like still high up in the police force even the past couple of years. So we're, uh, let, let's conservatively say he was only supposed to be like 50 maybe. People did look older back then. All right, let's say he's supposed to be 50. If he's like a head of police type of guy who's in his fi like 50 even, would, would he be expected to enlist in World War One? I, I? It's not really what I thought. I mean, I know they lost a lot of men. People were killed a lot for years there. So, like, all hands on deck sort of thing, but I don't know. I, I felt like he's... It seems a little unfair to me that the shade he's getting, even though it's, you know, because he's in the position where he's essentially the antagonist here. Um, it was... It, it is kind of satisfying when time we get the better from there and threw that in at the end, but it's just something I don't necessarily get. Yeah, so the sister, Ada, is pregnant with a communist. I'm blanking on his name again, but the, the guy who saved Tommy, his old friend's baby... And it was interesting then that the time he did tip him off to come back, if he was being truthful about that, which I assume he must be, because, I mean, the aunt was saying the whole time, and it is the aunt, by the way, I thought it was a mom last episode, but the aunt, Paula or Polly, um, was saying that the man won't come back or whatever, but when, I, when she was saying that, I was thinking, you know, maybe if he knew she was pregnant or a guy knows a girl's pregnant and was trying to run away, that would make sense, but at this time, he like even at the beginning of the episode, he didn't. I'm pretty sure he didn't know that she was, and and I guess Tommy tipped him off at the end there. 
So he proposed, and well, then he said he's not afraid of him, and he's staying around. But, I mean, I think th he, he needs to watch out for the cops more than, than the Peaky Blinders or Tommy or her brothers or whatever, because they were looking for him at the beginning, obviously. And the inspector note, like said, even he's the top guy they want, so it seems like a bad idea to stay around. But obviously, for the story and the drama, it makes more sense. Um, so we didn't see the shell shot guy this time. You know, I assume he'll be back later in the season here with whatever scheme Tommy has him working on, wherever he went. I think he might have went to Ireland or something. Let's see if I'm missing any big plot points. Oh, with the cinematography-wise and stuff, I, I did notice um, a lot of angles this episode. I didn't particularly notice it last time. Maybe it was the case in episode one, too, but a lot of, like, the two-shot angles, you know, one person, Tommy talking to the inspector and vice versa and talking to the barman and vice versa, they the shot was behind frame behind the person but it was like over their shoulder but like with their shoulder clearly on the screen a lot and even in like i pointed out in the scene with sam neill it's blocking the, the mouth of his face so it was an in I, I obviously had to be a, a stylistic choice but I, um not something i typically see so that was interesting um yeah music continued i'm assuming it's gonna go throughout the series to be uh, more modern day music that song they're playing is Red Right Hand by, um, what is it, Nick Cave, I think. Um, I, I think that song might have played in the, the first episode, too. Maybe it's kind of like the theme for Peaky Blinders here. So more mentions of the IRA. We still didn't see any members of that, though. But so the communists still there, and uh, we're getting the new gangs, like I mentioned already, like this Lee family um, and the uh, who they're at war with now. Bullet with his name on it. And then the, I mean, he's going for an alliance with this Kimber guy, I guess. Obviously, the Kimber guy is not, like you said, people work for me, not with me. Shelby's going along with that for now. Obviously, wants to not get killed and, and uh, play it right and get in bed with him. But I don't, I, I see it down the line that that would be some type of personality clash. Or it seems like Tommy has high ambition, so maybe he's, looking to take over that what Kember has one day here so we'll see what happens there um that was a good episode though I liked it um I definitely like the second one better I like the first one too but you know for first episodes can be a little uh setting up stuff and then you know as shows progress usually they get better and better especially as you know the characters more but um I liked it we saw with the hat here razor blade I don't have blades in here I gotta get that still but we saw that they literally do slash. Like, it looked like he slashed the one guy's eyes. And I think um, the inspector said something about that last time. So, looks like really what they do with these hats. We'll hopefully see more of that action next time, too. But anyway, that's been Drew's Views, Friday Flicks, Peaky Blinders. We'll be back next time for episode three. And we're out of here. Peace, Governor. Give yourself a decent haircut, man. We're going to the races. <laughs>